everyone. Happy Monday. I am so excited to be here with you. I know I say that every Monday, but I truly love being able to come on and craft live with you on Monday nights. If you're joining in, be sure to comment. Give me thumbs up and hearts if you like what you're seeing. Don't forget to share the feed as I do a draw for the cards we're going to make tonight um, for one lucky person that shares the video. I have two cards we're gonna make tonight and I haven't designed these yet. It's all rolling around in my head, so we're gonna play. But I thought we would try out some new products tonight, a little sneak peek for you all. So let's go ahead and flip the camera and get started. All right. Hopefully you can all hear me. I realize I didn't uh, mute my phone camera on the last part so if it was a little echoey i apologize but hopefully we're all set now so i thought tonight we would do mother's day cards because mother's day is coming up and if you're located here in ontario we are under stay-at-home orders once again and greeting cards are not essential so trying to get a card for mom for Mother's Day is going to be really difficult. So if you have craft supplies um, or you are in need of craft supplies, and hopefully that didn't just disconnect things. Sorry, I had a call come through, even though it shouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, it looks like maybe it froze just a little bit. If you're still seeing this, just give me a, a thumbs up or a heart. Let me know that we're still good to go. I think we're good. All right, so Dress to Impress is the stamp that I'm going to use, and I wanted to try out some of the new colors. So I have pulled in three, no, four of the new in colors. So I have Polished Pink, Soft Succulent, Fresh Freesia and Pale Papaya. So let's see what we can come up with here. So I'm gonna start with the polished pink for the first project. And this is an eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock. It is a standard A2 card size or quarter fold. Just going to burnish the edge. So there's our base and I'm going to do this one in a portrait landscape and then I'm going to layer on a piece of the um, soft succulent and this piece measures three and three quarters by five. I cut it a little bit smaller than I normally would um, just because I wanted to really show that beautiful polished pink in behind. So I'm going to mount that to the base using my stamp and seal. And this should leave a nice quarter inch border all the way around. And then we're going to layer our basic white on top of that, but we're going to do some stamping before we do. So I'm just gonna put that to the side. And for this card, I thought I would use the perfume bottle. So I'm gonna pull that out. And you know what, I'm gonna use some of these flowers too. So let's do. Hi, Michelle. All right, so I'm just going to stick our stamp to our blocks. So these are photopolymer stamps. If you're new to stamping, what I love about photopolymer is they are completely clear and they mount onto our clear acrylic, acrylic blocks. So you can see where you're going to be stamping, which makes placement a lot easier. And then when you're done with it, you just clean it with um, our simple chamois, which is a it's almost like a piece of foam that you just wet with water. You clean it off and then your stamp peels off the block for storage and it's ready to go for the next time. And the general rule of thumb with stamps is you wanna use the smallest block that fits your stamp to avoid that rocking motion that we all like to do. I'm gonna see if I have a small one, which I don't. So we're going to, I'm gonna switch these out. All right, so there are our stamps. And for this one, hi Michelle, I am going to, 
gonna do this. So I've got polished pink and soft succulent stamps. And I'm going to stamp flowers. But I'm going to stamp off on my scrap paper first because I don't want it to be as bright and bold on my white. Oh yes. I am loving this already. And I'm just kind of creating this little arc or scene here. There's no right or wrong. And you can see I didn't stamp that one off, so it's a little bit darker, but that's okay. So I'm happy with that. And if I wasn't happy, I could just flip it over and do it all over again. Two sides to every paper. So it's one thing to keep in mind when you're crafting is don't get discouraged if you think you made a mistake. Only you really know that you made a mistake to begin with. And then you can flip your paper over if you really don't like it. Just gonna grab another piece of basic white because what I wanna do is actually stamp the perfume bottle separately. And I'm going to stamp this in Memento, which is our basic black. And we do have dies that coordinate with this set, which I didn't pull out, but now I'm second guessing. Let me grab those. It's been a while since I've used them, so hopefully I can find them quickly. These dies are super cute. I think you're really gonna like them once I find them. So these are the all dressed up dies. And you can see that they coordinate with the stamp. So there's our lipstick and our shoe. And then we have our perfume bottle, our flowers. And then this die creates these cute little 3D handbags, which if we have time, I will show you how to make those because they're super cute. So I want our perfume bottle die. But first I wanna color in that perfume bottle. So you have a couple of options here. You could use the ink pads and an aqua painter, or you could use the ink pads and a um, blender pen. You could also use our stamp and write markers, or you can use uh, stamp and blends. So I'm gonna grab my blends in the polished pink, and these are alcohol-based markers. And I'm just gonna color the little gem, which is the top of the perfume bottle. And so I'm using the dark color first, just applying it to where I think there would be some shading or some shadows, which on this piece is anywhere where you have those faceted um, intersections to create that gem. And then I'm gonna fill that in with the lighter color. Just blending as I go. And I like to use a circular motion when I'm using Stampin' Blends, just to avoid getting those hard lines. So you can see anywhere that those dark lines where I've now blended those out and it's just created this beautiful shade. I think I'm also going to color the label of the perfume here.
just blending in those dark lines like so all right so let's pull in i'm going to pull in the mini stand cut and emboss machine i'm going to close up these ink pads even though i'm not done with them yet because as i'm sure i have said on numerous occasions i will inevitably stick my fist or clothes or something in them and I'm just going to trim my paper. If I were using the full size Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, I wouldn't have to do that. But because the opening here is so narrow, I want to make sure that my paper is going to fit. And so I'm grabbing my platforms. And so the die lines up perfectly with the stamped image. Get my hand out of the way there. So once you've got that lined up, you're going to put your other cutting plate on top. Oh, and you can see I shifted it there. So we'll just straighten that back out. Like so. Still shifting, there we go. Nope. It's because my plates aren't straight on my base. So when I go to sandwich them to run it through, I shift them again. All right, let's try that. And then you just feed it through using the handle. It goes through really easily and if they make those clacking, cutting sounds, don't worry about it, it's okay. So here is our die cut. Look at how cute that is. So cute. Put that to the side. And my thought was to layer this on top, but now, I'm thinking I don't like that. So remember I said there's two pages, <laughs> two sides to every um, piece of paper. We're gonna try this again. So what I'm actually going to do this time is I'm gonna stamp my bottle in the bottom here where I think I want it. And I'm gonna use that as a guide for my flower placement. Now I'm gonna cover my black ink up and you know what, I think I'm gonna stamp these flowers in the soft succulent. So I'm gonna clean those images. If you're tuning in, don't forget to share. I will be doing a draw for this week's projects. And last week, Debbie Crossley was the lucky winner of the cards that I made. So those have gone out in the mail to Debbie. And all she had to do to win was share this video. Nothing more. So easy. So you can see I'm just using the perfume bottle as my guide for where I want these flowers to go. Lovely. Okay. So I think I'm happy with that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to attach this to the card, popping it up off the base using Stampin' Dimensionals. But before I do that, we're going to um, attach this to our base, but I want a piece of ribbon. So I'm going to grab a piece of the new coordinating polished pink ribbon. Here it is. Look how beautiful this ribbon is. It's just so pretty. I love it. Love, love, love. And what I want to do is I actually want to tie a little bow to go beside the perfume bottle. And I'm going to cheat and use my bow maker, which I tuck to the side here. So if you've never seen one of these, um, this is one that I actually bought at a craft show. It's just a piece of three quarter or half inch uh, by probably four or two inch, half inch by two, drilled with holes and then a couple of dowels. And it just acts as a guide when you're tying your bow and it becomes a non-slip bow, which is super awesome. So I'm gonna tie my bow. 
And you can see I have a tail longer on the one side than the other, and that's because I'm gonna put it to the side. So then when you've got it tied, you just pull it tight and it's not going anywhere. So you can see now that that's gonna fit perfectly across my cardstock to the left of the perfume. And so to attach this to the card base, what I like to do is wrap the ends around the cardstock and secure them on the back side. So I am going to put that in place and then just put my adhesive down. Like so I wanna make sure that it's, it's straight. So there we go, we've got our adhesive attached there. And now you can just use your stamp and seal and we're going to mount this to our base. Just make sure that it's going the right direction. So super cute. We're gonna use our perfume bottle and some Stampin' Dimensionals. And these just add a little something extra to your projects. They actually lift it off the base, hence the name, it gives it dimension. And I'm going to cut myself a half dimensional here off the edge for the top of the bottle. And you just peel off the back like so. Oh, I've got them stuck in there, there we go. And then this is going to layer right on top of the perfume bottle we already stamped. How cute is that? And then of course we need a sentiment. So let's pick our sentiment. So because I said we're going to do Mother's Day theme, we're gonna use the Happy Mother's Day that comes in this set. And again, smallest block that fits the image. Sorry, I'm gonna just get my head in the shot for a second. Make sure it's on there. And I'm gonna stamp that in the, no, I'm gonna stamp it in the polished pink. And I'm just gonna stamp it about there, above the perfume. And then, you know me and my bling, I'm gonna use these fabulous 2021-2023 in color jewels. So they're like little rhinestones in the amazing new in colors. And I have to tell you, I have an in color club starting. So if you love the new in colors like I do and you want to get them all, but you need a cost effective way to do it, you wanna check out my in color club. It is a monthly subscription, so for five months, every month you're going to get a different color. So I don't know which, which order I'm going to do these in yet, but for example, if we were doing polished pink, you would get a pack of cardstock, a stamp pad, a re-inker, the Stampin' Blends, a Stampin' Write Marker, the Jewels, and I believe there's vellum and ribbon also included in there. So you're gonna get everything at a much more cost-effective price. And I do include some examples of how you can then use the ink colors to create beautiful pieces of art. So I'm just adding a couple little blingy blings to the card, like so. And there is our first project. So not too bad for off the cuff. And like I said, I didn't have this one planned out. It was kind of a playing in my head. How do I wanna do this? And so this is what I've come up with. I hope you like it. So I'm just gonna clean my stamps and we're going to get on to project number two. I'm gonna use the same stamp set, but we're gonna change out the images. So let me just clean up those stamps. So how is everybody doing? Where are you all from? I would love to hear where you're joining me from and how you're surviving in these crazy times. Um, you may or may not know that I'm in Ontario and we are under strict stay at home orders. Um, it, it's <laughs> with some mixed reviews, we'll say. There's a lot of controversy over it and a lot of people that are angry over it, which 
I understand it, it's hard. It's been a year and a half of this, but uh, we're doing our part. And what I will say is crafting is getting me through. For those of you that don't know, there have actually been studies that show um, crafts are good for your mental health. So that is my excuse when my husband says you're in the craft room again. Yes, yes I am because it's good for my mental health and I'm sticking, sticking to it. So if you are looking for ways to improve your mental health in lockdown, I can help you with that. I do have a card club which goes out monthly and you will make six cards, three different designs to each. Comes with envelopes and um, it comes with a video tutorial, step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the projects inside. And then there's also a PDF tutorial and a Facebook group that you can join. So there's, it's lots of fun. It's one of the best parts of my business. When we were in person, I was running it in person, but obviously have pivoted given COVID. All right, so card number two, I am using a fresh freesia base with the pale papaya. And this one I've actually cut even smaller than the previous card. So this is three and a half by four and three quarters. And I'm going to, I'm not going to attach that yet. And I think I might do this one in landscape. All right, so basic white once again. And this time I am going to use, I'm going to use this lovely lipstick with that. Okay, so here is what I'm thinking. And I think I like it. So we're gonna stick our lipstick down. We're gonna stick our water splooshy image down. And I'm going to ink our lipstick in our memento black. Because I'm going to color this using our Stampin' Blends. So there's our black. And I am going to use Fresh Freesia for our little splooshy here. I'm not sure what you want to call it. I'm just stamping on my scrap because sometimes photopolymer stamps don't ink well the first couple of times. So I just want to make sure I'm getting a good coverage. Hi, Francis. Thanks for joining. I'm going to stamp that right above our lipstick. I'm going to close that. And I'm just grabbing blends once again. You can see I grabbed a bunch this time. I should grab the wrong ones. Those are not the ones I want. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, basic black blends and I'm going to use the dark one once again. And that's just to create those shadows. And this image actually has some of those shadows already in the line art, which makes it really easy for you to to know where to apply that darker color. But you can always add more or less depending on your preference. So I'm just gonna thicken that line up and just curve it around the bottom a little bit. So this is the dark black blend and now I'm gonna come in with the light and I'm just gonna fill that in. So just like some of those name brand makeup or lipstick tubes you'll find. It's got that black outer shell. So there is our black. Next I'm going to pull in our smoky slate blends and I'm going to make this look um, like that silver lining 
that you would actually twist to bring up the lipstick. So again, just following those natural shadows that the line art already has in place for us. With the dark. And then I'm gonna go over that with the light. And again, I like to use that circular motion, just going over the darker lines to get that nice look. So pretty, I'm liking this. And here's where I'm gonna get a little bit creative. Because I like to tie colors together, have you seen those lipsticks that are two-toned? If not, we're gonna make one. So I'm actually gonna do this piece here in the pale papaya. And then the rest I'm gonna do in the fresh freesia. So again, this is the dark. So I'm just coming around here. There's something so relaxing about coloring. And the blends make it so easy. Cute. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Of course, we need a sentiment. So sticking with our Mother's Day theme, we're going to stamp Happy Mother's Day. And I'm going to do that in the pale papaya, just trying to tie those colors together. Hi, Nancy. Thanks for joining. And I'm gonna stamp that right there. Oh yes. Loving this. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble. So I'm gonna put my papaya on the base first. So again, this is three and a half by four and three quarters. So it's going to give us a nice border all the way around just to highlight that beautiful fresh freesia color. Next I'm going to layer on my stamped image and I actually might do this with dimensionals just to give it a little pop. These cards are so easy that I'm demonstrating, um, especially this one. It's just stamps, ink, and paper. There's nothing fancy. You don't need to have a die cutting machine. You don't need to have punches. And you could create something quick and easy to give mom or, um, you know, grandma, aunts, uncles, or not uncles, aunts, uh, <laughs> other women in your life to show them how much she, they mean to you on Mother's Day. And then of course, me and my bling, I'm going to add some sparkle. And I think I'm actually going to use the itty bitties. And I'm gonna combine the pale papaya and the fresh freesia. And let's do another freesia. I don't like that one there. No, nope, it's stuck there now, because that's where the, uh, the little glue dot stuck so we're going to add another one let's come any mini mini down here so there is our second card using the in colors and dressed to impress super cute super easy it's a great simple stamping project like i said all you need is stamps ink and paper you don't need a whole lot of accessories to make these but we have lots of time left so let me show you how to create those super cute little handbags that I said come with the coordinating dies. So I'm just gonna clean up the stamps because I need to pull out the big stamp and cut and emboss machine for this. And while I'm doing that, let me show you this beautiful bookmark I made to showcase the new in colors. So the fresh freesia, the polished pink, the evening evergreen, soft succulent and pale papaya. And here's another sneak peek for you. Can you see this beautiful pansy stamp in behind? 
so, so pretty. And it will be available on May 4th. If you do not currently have a demonstrator in Canada and you would like a copy of the catalog, you can PM me or email me your address and I will get a catalog out to you. So that you can see all the beautiful new product, projects and uh, samples and stamp sets that are available. Just tidying these up so I can put them out of the way. All right, so there's our stamp set cleaned up. I'm gonna put the bling a bling away and I'm gonna grab those dies back. All right, so these are the Dress to Impress dies. And when I first got them, I was scared of them, I won't lie. But once I've played with them and figured out exactly how they work, they are not so intimidating and they're so much fun. So we need this guy and this one. And I'm gonna say that's it for now, but we can add some embellishments up. So with this die, you do need the full size Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And I'm gonna zoom the camera out so that you can get a better view of what's happening behind the scenes here. All right, so I'm gonna get my cutting plates and you're going to need to cut two of this die and two of this die. These are your handles. Let me grab some paper. What color should I use? Should I use another in color? Is there a color you'd like to see from that bookmark that I showed you? What do you think? What color should I use to make our little bag here? We could also use designer series paper. So if there's a patterned paper that you'd like to see, I could try that. I'm thinking, let's go with the evening evergreen, just because I want to showcase a new color. All right. So obviously an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper isn't going to fit through here. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. All right, so now they are five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to put my bag on there. They're not quite big enough to get both. Um, you're not gonna get both halves on out of that but you will get one half and the handle out of there. All right, so let's cut this now. Yeah, it helps if it's on the cutting plate before I try to do that. having issues tonight. There we go. Okay. So again, just like the mini, you just crank it through. Just give it a, a hold on the top just to prevent it from slipping and sliding. It does have little grips on the bottom, but because I'm on paper, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, doesn't stay put very well. So there's one strap and then there's one half of our bag. And you can see that it has fold lines and it's got some faux stitching, so cute. So then we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side here. And the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine does go both directions. I tend to use it right to left, but you can go left to right, which is what I'm gonna do here. Just need to get everything in place. Go. So just cranking through. There we go. 
and it's okay if your die plates start to curve a little bit. Just flip them over and run them through the other way a few times and they'll straighten back out. I know some people think that their machine is um, defective or that their cutting plates are defective when that happens, but it's just the nature of the machine. It is a roller inside, so it, it does put pressure on it. So if they bend, just push them back through the other direction and they will be fine. All right, so we have two straps. We have two bags. So let me show you how to assemble this. And you're going to want to have a strong adhesive. So um, Seal Plus or Tear and Tape work really well here. Hi, Pat. Hi, Sonia. I'm just going to grab my Tear and Tape. All right. So the first thing you want to do is fold along the score lines. And these ones here, all the tabs, are going to fold in. This one is going to fold in. These, this one here, this long one is going to be a valley fold. So it's going to fold like so. And then these are also valley folds. So it's a little bit finicky, but I find if you do your creases before you start assembling, it works better. And if you're using um, designer series paper, obviously that paper is a little less rigid, so it, it will fold and crease nicely for you. So then we're going to do the same thing with the other piece. So just folding along those score lines. So far so good, everybody following. All right, and here's where we get to start assembling. So the pieces are going to go together in mirror form. So they're going to go together basically like this. And this is where you want your super strong adhesive. So I'm gonna use tear and tape. So I fling it across my desk here. And if it hangs over the edge, because you don't want it to come over the crease line, but if it folds over here, it's okay, because you can, once you peel off the backing, you can kind of fold it back on itself and it will hold really nicely. So we're just going to apply the tear and tape on all of these flaps. So I'm only going to do one side to start with. And then we're going to peel that back off. So you can see that it, it kind of hangs off the edge here. I'm just going to fold it back on itself. So it's not going to catch on anything inside the bag when we're done with it. Because these would make super cute little porch drop offs for mom if you're unable to see them in person with the restrictions. So again, just folding that over on itself if it hangs off the edge. Okay, so here's where we get to have some fun. So I'm going to do the side first. And what I want to do here is line up the fold at the bottom with where that line is and then just line the side up all the way up to the top. Give it a good push so you know it's in place. And then we can start doing the bottom. So we're gonna fold this side in first. We're gonna fold that edge over and then I'm going to fold this edge over 
And then we're going to apply our tear and tape to the remaining two tabs here to create our bag. So it's a little bit finicky, but it's not that bad. And once you've done one or two of them, it goes really quickly. I actually used these for the one of the treats of um, the goodie bags in my retreat in the fall. And they were a huge hit. And then this one's gonna fit inside there, so we're just gonna use our tear and tape again. Guess at the size. So I'm going to get the bottom corner tucked in first and then we're going to line it up with the sides all the way up to the top. So there's our cute little purse and you could actually have these pop out if you didn't like them folding in. So it's a bigger, bigger bag. I like them folded in. So there's our little bag, super cute. And then of course we have to have our straps. So our straps can go on one of two ways. They could go directly across like this. And you could have one, or you could have two of them, which I think would make it a little difficult to get things in and out, or they can go on like this. So then you have that cute little double handbag. For tonight's video, I think I'm just going to do the one just for ease of sanity. Actually, no, I lied. I'm going to do both because it's cute and I like it. So I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use my seal plus here. And this is where these embellishments come in, these dies. So these become little little buckle sliders that you can put on your straps or little buttons to have the straps being held on. So you can really do these up however you like. So there's my first dab of Seal Plus. I'm just gonna give that a good push. And then I'm going to put another dab on there. And you don't even have to do tone on tone. You could make this two tone. So if I wanted to use maybe the soft uh, succulent here just to give it some contrast, I could. So there's one side. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So about there. And then we've got our other dab on the other side. So there's our little handbag. I mean, how cute is that? And then you could put something in there for mom. If you had a lipstick to go with our lipstick card or some craft supplies if she's crafty. And then you can decorate that. So the, the dies do come with little labels too. So you could stamp on there. Let's do, let's dress this up because you've got me and I'm here and let's have some fun. So let's go back for Happy Mother's Day. And let's do, I'm going to hold that thought. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to pull in the pink. Pat, no, it's not discontinued. It's carrying forward into the new catalog. At least the stamps that is. Don't quote me on the dies. I have my catalog handy. Give me one second. So I can't show you the inside pages, but 
here's the new cover. If you haven't seen it yet, it's so pretty. Sorry, Pat, I'm just checking for you now. I don't think it is discontinued. It is not, it is in the new catalog. So these dies are definitely one that you wanna think about playing with. Ooh, I'm liking that. Okay, let's do some flowers too. And yeah, we're gonna stamp these in memento. <laughs> woohoo! Yes, woohoo! I like when stamps aren't discontinued or dies. This, this one is fun. All right, I'm gonna do another one of those. So what I'm doing now is stamping the flowers in Memento on my basic white, and I am going to color these with my blends because I want to decorate our purse here. So I'm gonna do one in the papaya. And I'm doing a really rough color here. I'm not, not being pretty by any means. Look at that, lovely. All right, and let's do one in this pretty polished pink. I feel like I have a nail polish this color that now I need to go do my nails in. It's so pretty. So bright. I'm almost certain I have a nail polish this color. So pretty. And then over here, I'm gonna do this one in the light polished pink and then this one. I'm gonna combine the polished pink with the pale papaya. And that's the other great thing about these blends is you don't have to stick color on color. So I just used the light polished pink with the dark pale papaya and created a whole other color there. And then I'm gonna grab the soft succulent for our leaves. Just adding some of the dark and then we've got the light. So fun. Does anybody else like to color? I feel like I probably color a lot on my lives, which I apologize for, but I really like it. I just, I like the look of it. I think it comes together really nicely with your project. And you know what, for this one, I'm just gonna pull in the mini uh, machine again because I don't need the big one. So I've got my plates. We're gonna cut out our Happy Mother's Day using this label die. And I'm gonna grab the flower dies to cut out my flowers. So I have the pear here, this one. And then the singular. Which we're gonna do like that. And we're gonna go one step further here. Oh, 
I have a little scrap of the papaya, which I'm going to throw through this way. And we're going to use these itty bitty little buttons. Maybe. If I can get them off. The dies come with this little adhesive so they don't get lost in shipping, but it makes it difficult sometimes to peel them off of there. All right, so let's see if I can get all of these cut on one shot. Go in. No. My cutting plates are misproportioned here. Give me a sec. There we go. Sometimes you just need to reposition the cutting plates to get them to to catch. And it's difficult one-handed. I'm holding it because I don't want the dies to shift. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to have to do that again to cut out the other flower. And... I'm going to cut out this other flower. Push everything else to the side for a second. So fun. There we go. Okay. So there's our flowers. Move that to the side. Get all my scraps out of the way here. Okay, so let's pull this back in. So we now have, I'm gonna take these out of our little bag. I've got some flowers. So we have three sets of flowers. We have our little label, which shifted. So I'm gonna re-stamp that. And this is the joy of the photopolymer. I can stamp on my label here, getting it lined up. There we go, so that's better. And then we have our little buttons, which this is the take your pick tool. And if you flip over this little spatula end, you have the little pokey tool, which will poke out your dies. There's little holes in it just for that reason. So there's one button. But the other thing about this tool, so I'm gonna flip this back around because I don't use the pokey side very often. So the putty piece unscrews and you can screw in the brush attachment and run that over. There is a piece of foam that it goes on that you're supposed to use it with. But basically you run it over the die and look at that, it pops it right out. You can use it to pop out the little details in there, like so, a whole lot faster. So there's our little buttons. All right, so let's put our buttons on first. So remember I said we can dress up our bag. So I'm gonna put our little buttons on here and I'm actually going to use Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm gonna use our mini black dimensionals for this. I'm just going to grab those out. So even though the, the button is light, the back is dark, which is why I think the black is going to work here. Because you would likely have a dark thread sewing on buttons onto a dark handbag. And that's why I'm going to use the dark ones. So there's our black dimensionals. And why I like the, the black dimensionals for this also, in addition to the, the black thread, is you don't notice it behind the, um, the piece that's popped up because it's a dark dimensional on a dark background. So there's our dimensionals. And then we can put our Happy Mother's Day on there and then sprinkle our flowers around. So again, I'm gonna use the black dimensionals here. 
And because these are the minis, I'm going to use three just to make sure it's fully supported. In the middle. And now let's layer our flowers on. So you can pick and choose how you want these to be positioned. Maybe you want them tucked underneath. Maybe you want them on top. Oops. Maybe you want to throw them at me. Who knows? So I think I like that. Mm. I think I like that. So let's do some more dimensionals. So I'm going to use the black dimensionals again, but I'm also going to use my stamp and seal just where it's going to overlap on the label. So the dimensional is going to pop it up off the purse and the seal is going to hold it onto the label just for some extra support. And then with this one, we're going to put dimensional on there. What I like about this pair of flowers is they, they kind of hug the corner a little bit. It's super cute. And then this one I'm going to put flat on the purse, kind of tucked underneath the label here. Like so. So there is our cute little handbag for Mother's Day that you can fill with goodies for mom. Like I said, they hold just about anything, you know, bottle of glue, maybe you have some nail polish or cuticle oil that you want to put in there. Just a cute little trinket bag for Mother's Day. So those are the projects for tonight. Let me pull them back out for you. So we have our simple stamping card and then we have our more stepped up card and our handbag. And I'm going to come around and talk to y'all. And yes, apparently I just... Hello again. <laughs> and hopefully I remembered to unmute. So those are our projects for tonight. I hope you enjoyed them. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I do have an in color club coming up. Um, it will begin in May and it is for you to be able to get all the in colors at a more reasonable rate. Um, it's not necessarily discounted, but it is spread out and you're going to get little bits of everything. So these are the five new in colors that are available. So we have Evergreen, oh, I don't even know the names yet. <laughs> Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, oops, camera, sorry. Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, um, Fresh Freesia, Polished Pink, and Pale Papaya. So you're, each month we'll focus on a new color. You're going to get um, paper, ink, markers, blends, ribbons, embellishments, vellum, as well as card designs that showcase each of those colors. So that begins in May. It is on my website now. So you can go in and register ahead of time. Card Club is also ongoing. The April packs, sorry, <laughs> popping off camera. The April packs are um, being mailed out. I think I've already shown one of the cards that we are making. Grab it and share with you once again. You've probably seen this on my social media a few times lately. Um, not only is this design a card club project, but I actually modified it. Instead of saying, you make me happy, it says Happy Mother's Day, and I've turned it into a Mother's Day um, card. So that's one of the projects that we're making. The April class features the Pretty Perennials stamp set. May um, is now open for registration because April is closed. And it features the Handsomely Suited Bundle, which is great for Father's Day. If you're like me, masculine cards are always a challenge. So you can, um, you'll make eight cards to each of four different designs featuring this great masculine set that you can use for Father's Day or masculine birthdays or whatever 
um, need you have, but they're great masculine cards. So that's May Card Club, and you can sign up on my website, www.inkspireme.com, and um, there is a tab for Card Club, so sign up there. Also coming up, Stampin' Bingo. I have that on the calendar for June 5th. Yay! Um, tickets are already selling, so get in there if you are looking to join us. We will play five games of bingo, and there will be crafting in between. We're going to be using the Inspired Thoughts stamp set to create projects. And of course, there's prizes to be won, so it's a really fun night. It's all done by Zoom, so we're in um, agreement with the stay-at-home orders, assuming that they're still in place in June, who knows at this point, but we wanna make sure that everybody is safe. So it will be done over Zoom, and then I mail out prizes once everything is complete and i think that i think that's everything i feel like there's more but it's not coming to me right now so i appreciate you all joining me tonight thank you so much from the bottom of my heart i love you all have a great rest of the week take care anything is possible it started with a dream our passion made a difference and built a family. We've grown strong together, you know it's all because everybody plays a part in doing what we love.